Okay, I bumped the controller um, between episodes, and this is way better than the, using the uh, thumbstick cursor thing. <laughs> Uh, you can know, use the LR buttons to just skip ahead to individual levels, so yay, you learn something new every day. Hello, everybody, it's here to you, and welcome back to Let's Play Tetris Effect. Ooh, this looks ominous. Ooh, spooky. I don't know if this will be uploaded in October or not, but if it is uploaded in October, yay! This meets the quota of having to let's play a scary finger puppet game at some point in no in October. Except it's probably not going to be uploaded in October because my upload schedules never work out. Okay, <laughs> before I say anything, I gotta say the blocks right now look like a dog. <laughs> Didn't it look like a dog for a moment? That was actually kind of cute. All right. Let's head over this way. I don't really, I don't usually like dogs or anything like that. Um, long story short, I got chased by dogs when I was a kid, so I'm not really that fond of dogs in real life. But the dog thing looked adorable and things like that. And it was adorable, and I already said adorable because I can't think of other synonyms. Synonyms. That is how you pronounce that word. That, uh, that background now looked like that one scene from Doctor Strange where they had all those... Uh, windows that took you to different parts of the world. Having something like that would be awesome because like then you can have a window uh, to work, if you're a restaurant, your family's house, and things like that. That's that's probably like the three things that I'd use mine for. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm not talking about Doctor Strange because now we're gonna be talking about Tetris. Except we're not gonna be talking about Tetris because I was reading about something interesting that I want to talk about. So in between videos, I was looking at the news, and um, today they said something along the lines of that uh, they had found that um, like when Vikings first appeared in the North Americas, and apparently it was like exactly a thousand years ago. So they had determined that it would have been like 1,021, which is like about uh, like exactly a thousand years ago, and that's pretty interesting. I always loved learning about history like that because like. Pretty much uh, most people knew that, um, like long before uh, What's His Face came to America, uh, that the Vikings came um, long, a long time before that. So it's kind of interesting to know, like, an exact a year now. I never understood why, like, even before, um, like, all the things nowadays, um, I, I never really understood why he was considered one of the best explorers of all time because, like, the thing is. Like, yeah, it is interesting that he wanted to know if he could make it to Aza by Sally West and things like that, but at the same time, even with the knowledge back then, how do you sail like that and think you land in India of all places? Because, like, they, even if he was continuing to sail in that one direction, you would have landed nowhere near India. So, <laughs> that's, just, that's just my little history tangent right there and things like that. Um, so, yay, learning about history in the middle of a Tetris Let's Play. Never thought I'd say those words. So anyway, let's head over this way. Wasn't it Leif Erikson who was like one of the first Vikings to show up in North America? Uh, like, the only reason why I know that is because uh, on SpongeBob they had a, they had a joke where uh, he was, where SpongeBob was celebrating Leif Erikson Day. And then I looked it up one time and... I remember reading that he was one of the first Vikings who appeared in America. I don't know the exact timeline about all that stuff. But still, history is fun to learn about. I like history. There was a whole side of that. <laughs> I didn't even see that that whole spot was empty until the last second. <laughs> Alright. Well, let's continue onwards, and ooh, this one is all snowy and things like that. That is interesting. Beware the frozen hut. I love Frozen. I know I know a lot of people consider it like an overrated Disney movie, um, because like popular and things like that. But I love that movie. <laughs> I love Frozen. It's honestly one of my favorite uh, Disney princess movies ever. I um, mean, like, it definitely does deserve to be, like, the movie that, like, symbolizes the modern Disney renaissance and things like that, so, yeah, I, I really like that one. 
I will say that one and the Lion King, they both kind of suffer from the big problem that Disney kind of has when their movie, uh, when one of their movies get popular. So they'll have a, they'll have a popular movie, and that's all fine and good and stuff like that. But then they will kind of just have it appear everywhere, and that's when people start to get annoyed by it. Like I remember, like even when I was a kid, I was getting annoyed by how much um, stuff Lion King was appearing everywhere. That is so pretty. Ah, uh, this background is so pretty. <laughs> Sorry. Um, because, like, I remember I remember watching the Timon and Pumbaa TV show, and back then I thought it was fine, but I kind of grew out of that one pretty quickly, and I didn't really care that much for it anymore. Like, that was around the time when I was starting to realize that I didn't really like Timon and Pumbaa that much, like, at all. Um, because I remember when I was a kid, I thought Lion King was always just okay. I couldn't quite put my finger on why, though. Um, but then as I got older, I realized it was because I thought the first half was awesome. But then when Timon and Pumbaa come into the movies, I, mean, I kind of feel like it goes downhill. Um, because a lot of their dialogue is like um, a bodily noise humor. So I get, that just seems like a little beneath the Disney animated movies. So I never really care that much for the fart jokes in um, The Lion King. Um, and I don't remember there being that much in the Lion King in the Timon and Pumbaa TV show, but I also just remember not really liking Timon and Pumbaa in general, so... Yeah, that's probably my controversial opinion for the day, not liking Timon and Pumbaa. And then you have Frozen nowadays, where uh, they remodeled Maelstrom after Frozen. That one makes sense, because the... A movie takes place in the similar region of the world uh, that Maelstrom originally took place in. Um, and also Maelstrom had been around for a very long time and it's just natural for old theme park rides to get a refurbishment after a while. Um, but even then, it kind of seems a little weird that they'd go with that one specifically um, because it was a beloved classic Disney ride and um, there's a lot of debate nowadays over whether or not um, opening day attractions that didn't have an IP attached to them should be rethemed or not. Um, personally, I, I'm okay if a, an older ride gets rethemed with a modern Disney movie in mind, um, because it just makes sense. But at the same time, um, when you take out something that's been around forever, it does kind of make people miss the old thing. Like for example, the, um, Mickey Minnie's Runner of Railway, like I absolutely love that ride. It is so much fun. It's really creative. And it really does make you feel like you're in a cartoon, which is kind of hard to do in a real-life setting. It's amazing how they're able to pull it off. But they but they got rid of The Great Movie Ride for it. And it makes sense because The Great Movie Ride was a very old um, attraction. It was an opening day ride for um, Disney and James Studios. Um, and they don't even have the rights to use most of those characters anymore, so like, why would they... Um, re, re the contract and things like that, especially when the MGM name isn't even in the park name anymore. But at the same time, it just kind of bums me out that they had to get rid of one amazing ride to make room for another one. So, yeah, I, I will miss the great movie ride, but I still absolutely love Mickey Minnie's Runway Railway. It's so fun. And I'm kind of surprised that I said it smoothly twice in a row, because normally I struggle saying the ride name. Um, but I said it properly, and that's my accomplishment for the day. Yay! <laughs> but going back to the Frozen thing, um, beyond uh, Frozen Maelstrom, it's got Frozen Ever After, but I would call it Frozen Maelstrom. So, the thing about that one is that on top of that, they did eventually come out with a sequel movie after a while, um, but it took a really long time for it to come out, and there was also that one controversy where um, Pixar movies usually have a short film attached to them before they have the actual movie start, um, but with Coco, rather than that, they had like a 30 minute long uh, Frozen short premiere instead, which is a really, really dumb idea, because it's 30 minutes long, so why would you think uh, children would have the patience to watch that um, right before the movie that they'd actually want to go watch? Because the thing with kids' movies is that um, it's kind of like an unspoken thing that you want to keep a children's movie on the shoulder side um, so that um, they don't get bored partway through because kids already have the longest attention spans in the world. That's why 
Um, a lot of R-rated movies are like three hours long and things like that. Um, because they're not really meant for kids to watch them in the first place. Uh, so they have a bit more uh, room to uh, tell a story no matter how long it is. So, um, yeah, it just seems really weird that they'd have like a 30 minute uh, frozen uh, short uh, premiere before that. I think, I remember the reasoning was that they, it was going to be like a, um, a Christmas special, but they felt it was a bit too theatrical for something like that, so they attached it along with uh, Coco. But still, it was 30 minutes. What's wrong with you people? <laughs> This one's really cool with the fire and the ice elements and the, on the side, that's a really nice uh, effect. <laughs> effect. <laughs> Tetris effect. <laughs> that's the game I'm playing right now. Alright, let's move everything, 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 everything. Trying to concentrate on the game so I can do stuff. Uh, we're doing decently well. But I am getting a little bit nervous because I remember one of these stages goes, and there's another one of those that go really fast. So I'm trying to leave some spaces open so that when it does go fast, I can make room for things. Um, so that is definitely one thing you'll want to keep in mind whenever you are playing through this game is that you want to keep spaces open in the situations where I start, where things start going really quick. That's a big reason why I decided not to do a higher difficulty. I um, mean, this let's play so that I guy can focus on that and the commentary at the same time. Trying not to distract me too much, but the background is just so epic in this stage. It's almost as epic as Mickey. We can salvage this. We can be like Rex and salvage things. I love that part between these Mass Brothers trailer for Pyra and Mithra when uh, Byra appears and then Rex is all like, What? But I thought I was going to be in Smash. But I really love how they did that. How rather than it being Rex and Pyra, um, they had it so they could swap back and forth between Pyra and Mithra. Because honestly, Pyra and Mithra are the main characters of that game, even though you play, even though it's told from Rex's perspective. I really love that it's Pyra and Mithra, mostly because I just know for a fact that if they went with Rex, he would have gotten the amiibo, but Pyra and Mithra wouldn't. And that is a rant I can go on for a while, but long story short, I really, really hate that female pilot isn't getting an amiibo. You know what? There's not much else that's going on. Let's talk about that. So, why in the world is Alex from Minecraft getting a separate amiibo from Steve, but female pilot isn't? That is beyond stupid. <laughs> like, yeah, it's great that there's gonna be like two Minecraft amiibos and things like that. I really hope they actually do something in Minecraft. But why in the world is there not a female bodice amiibo? In fact, why in the world is female bodice not the default one? Everybody likes the female bodice more. Why isn't, why was the male one the default one? It really, really bothers me. Like, I, I really like Byleth. Uh, Byleth is probably one of my favorite uh, newcomers in Ultimate, uh, to be completely honest. But it really annoys me that when they have Avatar characters like that, it's usually the male that's the default, uh, even if the female one's more popular. Uh, because, like, the only Avatar like characters that they had with the female being the default was Inkling and Wefit Trainer. But they didn't do that for any of the Fire Emblem avatars. There were three of them, and the default for all of them were male, and that really rubs me the wrong way. Because like even in like the promotional material for Smash, it's usually the female Corrin that's uh, usually the default in the artwork and things like that. Because you'll see that on the um, classic mode banner and things like that. So, just why is it the male that's the default? 
it just annoys me so much. And the one thing that I'm getting a little worried about is that they didn't really confirm if uh, they probably will have a Sora amiibo, um, but um, they didn't already confirm one during the Final Smash presentation, so I don't really know when they would announce another one. Um, I don't really know when they would announce his amiibo um, things and things. So, like, that is one thing I am getting a little uh, concerned about because um, Disney is kind of unpredictable when it comes to partnerships and things like that. So, um, it's a little hard to predict whether or not they're going to let uh, Sora have an amiibo. Awesome. We still only got a C rank. I think we, I don't think it's possible to get a higher rank than a C um, on these. It might be possible to get a B or something, but I don't see getting an A um, on the easier difficulties, which I'm fine with because I don't really care that much about ranking and things like that. But that's going to be it for this episode of Tetris Effects. We're getting pretty close to the ending, so thank you all so much for watching this video. And the next time, I need to gear to you. Oh, yeah.